This is fun. Just don't move your head very quickly because it makes it dizzy. Cool. Very cool. Is that a boat? Oh, there's people walking. I didn't know you can walk in the middle of that island there. Now, what is a drone mask? Do you need one? How much does it cost? And if you decided to buy one, what exactly is in the box and what would you actually get? So many things to talk about. I am super excited. Let's take a look. Now, Drone Mask is a Norwegian company that has the vision of making the drone flying experience even more immersive. So, what is the drone mask? Well, it says it here on the box. Immersive high definition drone goggles. So these guys out of Norway had the amazing idea to basically combine the movie theater experience with drone flying. They've had previous products also known as the movie mask and then the original drone mask was called Magi Mask. Uh, if I read their FAQ on the website correctly. However, they have rebranded it to Drone Mask, much more appropriate, and it's now a fully drone-focused product. So in this overview video, we're gonna unbox the Drone Mask and see what we would get um, out of the box if we were to decide to purchase this. The price tag on this is $169. You can already buy it here in the US. Um, just through their website, but uh, the Drone Mask team is planning to launch or do a bigger launch um, here in the US. And that's why they've reached out to me and asked me to do a review. So that is what we're gonna do today. And big thanks to Wilde and the team in Norway to um, send me this amazing product and give it a review. Now, this is what you get when you open the box. There's a couple of uh, signatures here. Um, from the CTO, CEOs, product designer, etc. That's kind of like a cool um, personal touch, like it's the drone mask team that is neat. And overall, the box feels, um, yeah, really nice, really sturdy, almost like a DJI slash Apple unboxing experience. Here you go, get a little pouch, a little mask here. Um, it says drone mask on the front. That is very cool. Let's put this aside for a second. What else do we get? We get a user manual. Okay, we might wanna take a look at that. Yeah, we probably need to take a look at this because it explains how it works. And then there's a little thank you card um, in Norwegian. Five years, three successful products, so I didn't understand it correctly, 100 prototypes, 3,000 meetings, and around 10,000 cups of coffee later. Here's the drone mask. That's awesome, um, still a very personalized startup touch. Um, I work for a startup company myself. I really highly appreciate that. This is a cool experience, I like it. So opening this little um, pouch here, it is almost like a VR. Um, well, it is a VR, okay. So, wow, okay. This is what it looks like. Um, it is lightweight. I don't know if you've got much experience with other VR headsets. I've got the PlayStation VR, which is, well, A, super heavy, and B, there's a bunch of cables coming out. But I know that other headsets, um, VR headsets, are pretty heavy. I feel like this is pretty light, but obviously um, the phone will also still have to go in there. So I guess it depends on how heavy your phone is as well. So let's put the pouch to the side, clean this up a little bit here. We don't need the silicone pouches, um, little lens cloth as well. And thank you card can go away. Where's my phone? All right. So this is what you would get out of the box. Um, it is kind of cool. So you get your strap, which goes around your head. And then this is their amazing technology, I suppose, because why are you paying $169? It actually says it on their website, which is funny. Um, isn't it just the same thing as the cardboard uh, $9 um, VR headset where you just slide your phone in? And the answer is not quite. 
because with a cardboard one, you literally just slide your phone in and it sits right in front of your eyes. These guys have put in lenses and they don't split your view into like left and right, like typical VR headsets would. It, they are just lenses that make you that give you the ability to utilize the whole resolution of your phone. So I've got the Google Pixel 4a here. The resolution of this phone I'll just put up here, but obviously it depends on whatever phone you're using. So if you're using an iPhone, you usually have pretty good resolution. So I'm just gonna put this on for a second here just to see how it feels. And actually that I probably look ridiculous, but um, it's pitch black. I see nothing. So I guess that's part of the um, um, the the goal of this to um, a also give you a more immersive drone flying experience, but also block out all um, sunlight for um, for a better viewing experience. I'm sure you know if you're a seasoned drone pilot and uh, you're flying on a regular basis, more often than not, you wish you had a little shade thing, and then you buy those little ten dollar shade things on Amazon and. They kind of do the trick, but they're also flimsy and you forget them. And um, this is like the full on solution. Obviously with this, I do have to say, or well, this feels sturdy and I am super excited to try it out. Mm. It doesn't seem lock unlock. I'm just wondering if I can make this smaller for transportation purposes. Because if I think about my backpack, um, the Low Pro 350AW2, well, I can't believe I remembered that, um, it's pretty packed like with camera and GoPros and um, drones. So adding this to the backpack will actually be a challenge for me. Um, that might not be the same for you, or if you're using the, um, the classic, um, you know, DJI Air 2S carry case where it's just the drone and the two batteries. Um, I feel like this won't quite fit in there. So this is interesting. When you open this up, um, this is where your phone slides in, up here in the front, and then you get to see the lens that reflects the image of the phone. And then here's a little pouch thingy to um, connect it. So what I'm gonna do real quick here is I'm just gonna hook this up real quick. Um, I got a cable here. So it doesn't come with a cable, um, just FYI. So depending on what phone you use, um, you'll need to have um, the right cable. I'm using USB-C to USB-C. I've got my um, drone controller here. I'm using the little um, horse, B, B horse, B horse. Um, look, I'm using a little bee horse uh, carry cage, uh, carry pouch so that I can put my um, uh, extra long uh, controller sticks on there and also a carabiner so I can hook the controller to my pants while taking master shots and not have the controller in the frame. So I really like this $9 pouch. Um, in case you're interested, obviously links are down below. So let me just plug this in really quick. And now, how would this work? Oh, I suppose this comes out. And then, that's why the GoPro is set up, so you can see a little bit how the experience would work. The cool thing is that this really just works with pretty much every drone app. There's no custom app you have to download. You just fly as you normally would. Now. I don't have the biggest phone, as I said, it's a Pixel 4a, and this is a longer um, iPad Pro cable, and I'm kind of noticing that the cable is getting a little bit squished. I'm unclear if the phone needs to be centered. Oh, I'm doing this wrong, okay. Oh, there's an opening pouch on the, yeah, I'm doing this wrong. Never mind that, I am doing this wrong. So this little front pouch here, or front flap apparently goes open and that's where the camera of your phone comes out so you see this this is where your camera is supposed to be positioned just like that let me where's my drone where's my drone we're just going to fire this one 
Just gonna start it up just to see that we can see something. Okay, and uh, we're gonna start this. So the other thing I did wanna mention is that um, I more often than not switch between different frame rates of shooting and especially also um, video, photo, panorama. I love panoramas, right? I mean, everyone loves panoramas. So I suppose while using the mask, you just switch the one mode you wanna use like 4K, 60 frames per second, zip it all up and, and enjoy and and enjoy a whole battery flight before coming back down and then maybe doing another flight with another battery and just doing the photos like separately. So this is more like of an immersive um, flying experience and not so much of a I want to get the best footage kind of experience. So let's just do that real quick. Um, okay, so I'm gonna zip this up. I'm gonna put this on my head. Okay, whoa. So that's the other thing that, oh, this is hilarious. Whoa, whoa. So that's the other thing that I, um, okay, it's pretty sharp. I don't think I have to adjust it. I just wanna try, so. Okay, so, okay. So if you are, if you do unlock it, then you can push it out just in case like stuff isn't sharp. Actually for me, this is a little bit more comfortable um, because the one, as I said, I do have the, the PlayStation VR. Whoa, oh, this is too close. It's just too close. It's all sharp. I don't know, the sharpness is not changing for me, but that, which is good, it's, it's sharp no matter what. So that is great. Um, it's quite warm in here and I feel like there's a little bit of, one of the lenses is a little bit foggy, um, but well, you're normally not using this inside anyways. So the one thing I am worried about is that in um, on a normal VR headset, like with video games, I get quite dizzy and rather quickly. So I worry that if you're out there and you're like me and you get dizzy quickly, then this may not be optimal. Um, yeah, so the lenses are getting foggy a little bit. I have to, I have to try this out. I have to try this out outside. But um, yeah, so the phone makes a tremendous difference in terms of weight. So my wife has the, um, the iPhone 12 Pro something, which is significantly heavier than the Google Pixel 4a. But I have to say the experience is amazing. It's like, a movie theater. It's like I've never seen my drone screen um, that big. Like I can't wait to go outside and try this. So that is cool. I have to say that is very cool. Um, yes, the lenses are all foggy now. Sorry, lenses. What I don't understand is the AR stuff. If you want to use the phone camera for AR purposes. So obviously I'm not using any, they don't have an app. So, it's just if I wanted to use the mask for a different purpose, or maybe there is a drone AR app that I'm not aware of. I mean, that wouldn't make sense because, um, yeah, not sure, not sure. Again, they have a background in movie experience, like just um, instead of like, you know, some people watch movies on their smartphones or so, with this, you can watch a movie on your smartphone, but get like a movie theater experience, especially if you put like cool headphones. So you can still use it that way 100%. Um, but again, this is meant for, for the drone flying experience, which we are going to try out now. All right, and we are outside. As you can see, it was a bit of a struggle to get this into the backpack, but let's just get the drone up in the air and see how this thing feels. And for the sake of this experience, I'm not flying with ND filters. I'm gonna switch over to the DJI standard color profile just so we can enjoy the flying experience. 
Okay. Just want to make sure that this thing slides in here. I know that the camera is pointing out there in the back, even though that has no real purpose as of now, because we don't have an AR setup. So, not sure what that is all about. But for now, we will turn on the controller, which has almost no battery, so this is going to be a quick flight. The app is launching. We are almost good to go. Oh yeah, maybe I should take my sunnies off. That might help. And then also we don't have controller sticks on there yet. Sorry, I'm Oh, and I have not switched the color profile, which is now, which I suppose is one of the downsides if you ever need to switch something in your app and you have to open this up and go through the whole process. So we're gonna do that real quick. We go on video, we go on auto, we go on normal, and we're happy. Oh, and you know what? We're also gonna turn off the grid lines just for a more full-on viewing experience. That, I like that. So we do that, we close this thing up again. I suppose, like this. Um, and then, since this is quite rocky here, oh boy, this is a little bit difficult. Because there's sand, so I don't really want to... Okay, so this is upside down, wow. Okay, this is intense, this is very intense. Okay, I gotta do it. Oh. Yeah, see, I gotta press the button now, but obviously I can't. So, we put the drone down again, open the thing back up, and push the button on the screen. Which I have to say, I mean, once you do this a couple of times, oh, and obviously press record. So, we're gonna do that now. I mean, we can always press record on the controller, but yeah, some things you can't do from the controller, like acknowledging that you've checked your propellers and stuff. So, I don't know about that. Um, but, but I am excited for this flying experience, so let's see how that goes. Um, I'm gonna do this for a second here, like this. I know I look like a, like a crazy person. I gotta do this. Whoa. Okay, controllers both to the, Bottom right, bottom left, which starts the controllers. And now we're up in the air. Okay. Here we go. We're recording. We're doing 5.4K at 30 frames per second. All right. Wow. Okay, so the haze effect or the fog effect I had earlier in the studio seems to be gone. No, this is very clear, very sharp. Wow, I'm going 30 miles an hour. Okay, this is very different. I don't feel like I'm getting dizzy, maybe a tiny little bit. Okay, I can definitely see more. This is interesting. Wow. Obviously, I can't look around like this, but I have definitely, oh, there's people walking. I didn't know you can walk in the middle of that island there. Oh no, I think that's a pole, those aren't people. Interesting. Okay, wow. So I have to say, this is a cool experience. Okay, I feel like this forces you to fly a little bit more smoothly, just because, yeah, you're in it. You're definitely more in it. Wow. This is an interesting experience. I have to say, you can see really well and I know I just pointed out a few downsides, like, you know, not being able to press buttons. For example, right now I'm just gonna stop here. Um, there's no way for me to now switch and do a panorama of beautiful San Francisco skyline. It's, I mean, I could, but I would have to unzip the whole thing and um, yeah, I don't really wanna do that. Plus also my drone control is pretty empty, so I'm gonna go and fly back. But this is, um, okay, I have to say rotating is a bit of a, 
wonky feeling, at least for me. It depends on how you feel about how this is. You can see so much more. I can see the detail of the houses. Um, obviously, I'm flying in a normal color profile right now, so it's trying to expose perfectly how, to the best of the camera's ability. But this is just cool. Like, you definitely get a much better feeling of what it is that you're recording. I don't want to fly over the houses because we're not supposed to do that. Cool. Very cool. Okay, so you definitely want to hold your head pretty steady. Um, let's see if we all just... Wow. Wow. Yeah, and not flying with grid lines is something I haven't done in a very long time. Um, but this is just... it helps with the experience, I suppose. I wish you could put all the DJI controls away and have just the screen. So we're just flying safely back here. Some beautiful houses on the left. Wow. Okay, this is cool. Just don't move your head very quickly because that makes you dizzy. Ideally you sit down or something. Is that a boat? I have to say, you can control this pretty well. All right, um, and I suppose that was our flight. So in order to land, whoa. Oh, yeah, so this is tricky. So obviously you don't have a screen, but that's okay. Most of us have a landing pad or somewhere safe to land anyway. So, great. I would say, wow. <clears throat> this is fun. This is definitely fun and a very new experience. I think for $169, if you really care about the immersive drone flying experience, this is definitely something to check out. Um, if you are getting dizzy with VR headsets, I would be a little bit mindful. And also, if you're a drone pilot like me who tries to get the most out of their battery life, and try to get panoramas and images and 4K 60, 4K 30, 5K 30 and you're switching a lot and I don't know but the drone isn't turning off then you don't really you're not gonna be able to do that so this is really just um, I'm gonna put this down now um, you're really just gonna get a, uh, a yeah, one-time flight out of it so that's something to keep in mind but but it's an amazing experience so, uh, Joel Mask, you did a great job and I would highly recommend your product. Thank you guys so much for watching and um, I will see you in the next one.